Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Friday, May 17, 2019, and I'd like to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, and if you would kindly hit the like button, guys, that would be terrific. All right, well, we're going to take a look at a couple of sites in Peru today, um, actually a few sites in Peru today that are basically, I think, ignored sites, overlooked sites, there's not a lot to be said on these sites. There was archaeology, you know, archaeological um, research done at these sites, but you know, evidently through maybe the uh, University of Peru elsewhere. But there's not a lot of scholarly articles on it. The only um, the only uh, article I could come up with about the one site, Tambo Maque, which is this site here. All right, and this is the site we're going to primarily be looking at tonight, but there's not a lot to be said about it in this Wikipedia article, okay, but there's much going on with this site. There's more than meets the eye here. We're going to discuss it a bit here, but take a good look at that picture for a second there, and... We're going to talk about it, and actually the only article you find on it is by Atlas Obscura, and, um, you know, I think some people think that Atlas, Atlas Obscura is like an alternative research, you know, magazine, but it's, it's not. It just reports anything, mainstream or not. They say that Robert Thorson is the expert on the stone walls of New York and New England. Give me a break. You know, he's the last one that's the expert on the walls. He doesn't know what he's talking about, just barely does. <clears throat> but in any case, this was the only information I could really find on, on it, other than travel um, blogs and travel blogs on this site. That's about it. And um, at least Atlas Obscura gets into it a little bit, but... We're going to look at everything in depth, but this is just one of the sites, and we're going to talk about some other sites that's more like a PSYOP going on, but we're going to look at some of this stuff, and this site sort of reminded me of, Andrew just did a video on um, ancient history criticisms and um, on the mystery of the bevel blocks, part 16. If you don't know Andrew and his channel here, it's just amazing stuff. This video is just incredible, shows just a whole lot of sites. And, but he starts with this one in Tunisia, and you know, I said to him, this is like, this is like hobo still, you know, this is like a mishmash of all kinds of cannibalized and repurposed stuff. And by the way, with bevel block, there's only one way you can use it in a wall like this. If you're putting, you know, precisely cut, you know, block on it, it's got to be face in or face out. It just, it can't be any other way. But, um, you know, as of course, any other block that's cut flat on all sides, it's, you know, you put that anywhere, but the bevel block can only go one way. And this other thing with, you see once in a while, and you've seen it other places, Andrew's mentioned it, okay? Besides so this place being a mishmash, like it's a medieval work trying to hold up the thing. They built a, inside the temple another sort of church-like thing with crosses here on the outside or whatever, but this is like a mishmash of all kinds of stuff here. So it reminded me a lot of this site in Peru called Tambo Maque, and we're going to read about it from Atlas Obscura. And by the way, I, I just, uh, I think a lot of this block that Andrew mentions and other people mention that you'll see a block with, you know, a solitary hole in it. I think that's just another kind of clamp for like vertical block you know, construction method with a peg, a wooden peg, a positioning peg, similar to that of the columns. You know, they have a central, you know, core that's, uh, you know, often a hole in the center, but that was for a post for it to go on. So you could easily position these segments of, of them precisely. Not all columns are segmented, but, you know, some are, and those segmented type columns have, you know, these holes in the center. But similar like that, but also for safety reasons. If you have this vertical 
position, you know, positioning peg for each block, you know, and I'm sure they were using a sort of, you know, fulcrum and weaver type crane, you know, with multiple men lifting these blocks into place. That's what I think, you know, that can assemble and disassemble that thing real quick and um, lift these blocks into place. And you just put them willy-nilly, you know, bottom out. As long as they were flat on all sides, that was enough. But, you know, they weren't hoisting them, you know, with two guys breaking their backs. They used a fulcrum, a lever and fulcrum setup, you know, crane, real easy. But they, those pegs, you know, were just positioning pegs for block as well as columns, you know, and it just made the work easier, safer, more precise, etc. So think about it that way. That's what I think anyway, but. All right, but it made me think of Table Make because Table Make is like a mishmash of all kinds of stuff going on, too, even though they say it's all Inca work. Yeah, it could be from any part of the timeline, but, you know, it's either they went from being really, you know, precise and, you know, particular to getting, you know, more and more and more, less and less and less precise, more and more sloppy, and, you know, I think this site is an important site, you know, it's like there's nothing to be said about it. And I guess no more archaeological research is being done on it, but it's phenomenal here. And it's all about, you know, water here. I mean, it's a pretty important site, yet there doesn't seem to be a lot to be said. But Atlas Obscura has some, it's not an alternative site. They say, they put anything on here. But... This is the most I can find about it, so let's read about it here. Tambo Maca is an Inca archaeological site located just outside of Cusco. Its precise function is unknown, okay, so it's unknown. But it may have served as a ceremonial site, an Inca spa, or military outpost, or perhaps a mix of all three, or all three at different time periods, who knows. Tambo Maca sits on a hill about four miles north of Cusco, uh, at about 12,150 feet, 3,700 meters above sea level. Okay, and we're going to hoof around some blocks. That sounds like fun, right? Take a deep breath a couple times. Three, the structure consists of three-step terraces of precise Inca stonework with trapezoidal niches built into some of the retaining walls. Okay, we've seen these trapezoidal niches a lot of times. We're going to look at more later, but... Just keep that in mind. When you see these trapezoidal niches, you see the, you know, how precise these things are. And even in the polygonal stone type constructions, like at Saxe Wyman, and even here at uh, Tamalmake, okay, it's not quite the same, or maybe not even done by the same people, or different time periods. I don't know, but we're going to look at it a little bit, and we're going to, you know, you judge for yourself. But I'm just throwing it at you. Okay, with trapezoidal niches built in some of the retaining walls, the whole thing is built over or into a natural spring, which continuously feeds a series of small aqueducts, canals, and waterfalls built into the terraces, which is pretty neat, I say. The site is also known as El Baño del Inca, or the Bath of the Inca. This refers to one of the long-held theories theories about the site's function that it was a spa of sorts for the Inca ruler or maybe for the wider Inca nobility or maybe for everybody, you know, they put their own, you know, they project their own, you know, perception onto it. <clears throat> it's a secluded and tranquil spot and the constantly flowing water would certainly have provided for all the Inca spa break needs, ha <laughs> ha. But there was probably more going on at Tamil Marque than just high altitude bathing as is evident at the numerous sites to the sacred valley. Water, and the control of water, okay, and I mentioned this many, many times in my videos, and I've done many videos on different peoples, native peoples around the Americas that, you know, are canal builders, engineers here, you know, where I'm at in Long Island, Mongatuxi, the giant chief of the Montaukett tribe out east here and you know building canals and canals everywhere and water manipulation and you can see it in my video series if you're new to the channel I have my own research site and my site up with uh, Jimmy his site in Vermont I go up there to visit him and we look at sites there and 
just a lot of stuff on my channel if you haven't seen it and you know places where water was being manipulated and all this kind of different stuff going on with water okay had a ceremonial had a ceremonial function for the Incas. Okay, so water is a ceremonial function, is among other things. It's you know much more than that, as we all know. They were able to control the flow of water with great precision, often bringing the water from springs way up in the mountains via stone channels and aqueducts. And finally, the fountains and waterfalls had important points within their religious sites. Considering the presence of precise water features at Tambomake and its construction on a natural spring, it's likely that it served a ceremonial function connected with water. The trapezoidal niches could have served as ceremonial purpose, perhaps to hold offerings. Trapezoidal niches and openings are, however, ubiquitous in Inca architecture, from the finest temples to the most basic walls, and we're going to talk about that in a while because it's much more than that i mean it's you gotta look at this carefully it's possible that all this could have been tied in with the notion of a spa if the inca ruler did come here to bathe and cleanse himself that in itself could have been a ceremonial process probably like it is for all of us other archaeologists, such as Fed Federico Kaufman Doig, have argued that the primary function of Tambo Maque must have been military. Kaufman Doig pointed to the terrace nature of the site as evidence for this, the terraces being similar to defensive terraces found at other sites. Tambo Maque is also located in close proximity to Puka Pucara, about 680 yards to the southeast, which is almost certainly an Inca military site. As with so many Inca archaeological sites, there's a strong possibility that Tambo Maque served more than one purpose. It could have well been both a military outpost and a ceremonial center, and perhaps even a spa for overworked Inca rulers. But there's more to the site than what they show, and there's adjacent places that are very interesting there. Yeah, we'll look at those. Okay, so here's the no before you go. It's like a travel, you know, a, you know, tipping you off for travel because, you know, that's the only, this is what it's focused on. As far as they're concerned, the archaeology there has been done and that's it. And, you know, they know what it is and there's no more to do and we're not going to think about it anymore. So you see this lengthy article here in Wikipedia, unlike the one for Saksai Waiman, which is, you know, just endless babbling about it because it's such an impressive site and huge and all you know theories about its construction they you know they don't know but they have theories but remember that they have theories which are guesses educated guesses about construction and about how you know it was supervised by you know and the work groups took turn could you imagine you get a call from your tribe somewhere around there you got to go work on this project <clears throat> and, you know, I guess the idea was everybody was like, yeah, let's go and do it for the king and the kingdom and all this kind of stuff. And there was never any guys who said, what? What do they, what do they want us to do? Move like what? You know, 100 ton box? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know what? If I'm not there in five minutes, start without me. All right. There was never any guys like that, I guess. But, um, okay. So. In any case, that's what they say about Saksai Waiwan, but you can see this endless chatter about this site, and it is, you know, quite phenomenal. And you can see even the Inca work that, you know, is this crude work right here is pretty neat, you know, being that it is crude work, unless this was done in modern times, we don't know. But it certainly ain't this, you know. And this is what the puzzle is about all of these sites. They went from this to this. And it's just like, yeah, you know, just, you know, it's just part of the stylization, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, they did this, and then they did that, you know, they meant to. But I don't think so, because we're going to take a look at this site, Tambo Maka. We're going to take a good look at the pictures here and analyze it a little bit. Let's read what it has to say in the Wikipedia here in this lengthy article they have here. Timo Make, possibly from Quechua, Tampu Inn, Guest House, Make Cave, or Make Drunkenness, to get drunk, or, quote, spindle with thread, unquote. Or who knows where any of that stuff comes from, but hey, just whatever, you know, just comes from somewhere, I guess. 
In an archaeological site associated with the Inca Empire, located near Cusco, Peru, an alternate Spanish name is El Baño del Inca, the bath of the Inca. It consists of a series of aqueducts, canals, and waterfalls that run through the terrace rocks. The function of the site is uncertain, and it may have served as a military outpost guarding the approaches to Cusco as a spa resort for the Inca political elite, or both. And, and what? And, and nothing. <laughs> well, what do you mean, and nothing? Oh, you heard me. What are you, deaf? All right, man. So let's take a look at this thing because there's more than meets the eye here. Let's take a look at this for a second here. And here they just show various pictures of the site. The waterfall in front of the place there, and you can see the polygonal stone, and you can see the more precise, you know, with the trapezoidal cutouts there, and we'll take a better look. But let's look at a little, couple little things around here. Here's some uh, angle of it that you don't see. It's that corner there of this differently done than the polygonal stonework. It's still polygonal stonework, but it's has a different, you know, to, in my mind, this is just completely different work than this work here and the work we saw at Sakusai Waimang. It's not the same. Maybe different period. I don't know, but there's a difference, okay? More precise in a lot of ways. And even the stuff on top, it's not even the same stone. It appears to be like a pink granite. And different construction as well. Okay, let me just see here. Now look at this thing right here. This is close to the site here. You see this thing here? All right. And I assume this is a piece of bedrock here. What is this here? This is not small stone this is like bedrock here like shaped concavely with the polygonal stone the really finely worked polygonal stone right and then you see the more primitive inca work down here okay almost looks polygonal but you know they're trying real hard by fitting you know stones that are adjacent to the other stones that fit almost like polygonal work. And I've said that about all the stonework everywhere it has to be like that. It's like a puzzle that you have to put together. If you want to make the top flat or build it to a certain height or whatever it is, it's not necessarily polygonal stonework, but it's a form of it because it's not cut stone. It's just random stone. But you can see this more finely stuff in this weird concave cut flat and I don't know what to make of it here, but it's very strange. That's nearby. Okay. And one of the other fountains I want to show because it shows the stone dressed into the rock, which into the bedrock. It's a good picture of it here somewhere. Okay. Here's a decent picture of it. It's not the one I really want. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. All right. Ah, I don't see the one I really wanted to look at. This is it here, but... Right, but you can see the polygonal work, but it's more, it's a different style. And here is bedrock here that it's fitted against where this spring comes out on one side of it. They don't show this side of it in a Wikipedia article. They show everything else, but there's just other stuff associated with this site, but not much to be said about it here, sort of an overall picture of it here. All right. We're just going to look at the Wikipedia one here for a second. All right. And you can see, you know, the polygonal type 
tightly fit stonework that goes from sort of large block up to smaller and smaller and it, you almost wonder if the top portion of it was finished off by somebody else and maybe some of this but it certainly this is different and if the color picture is correct it's some sort of pink or red granite with more precisely cut stonework more angular 90 degree angles in this plus with a flat top okay it's just this construction is different than this okay but could be by the same people and then to the right of it with different stone than this more like this stone here also with this sort of you know more angular right angle type block used here and then the transition to this polygonal block right and then even in the foreground here you see this is some decent polygonal work done here but it seems like an entirely different stone than this the stone around the little spring waterfall here seems more in line with the polygonal work up here plus the central part here and some of the stonework in front of it here in front of the uh, waterfall here but Take a look at it from a different angle. It's just showing the elevation. You're up 12,000 feet, you know, moving, uh, you know, 10 ton, 5 ton, you know, 1,000 pound stones around. So you can see in the front of this thing, you can see some, I think, of the much finer work, polygonal work. This part of it was there's some indentations in the tops of these three stones and this might have been rebuilt. I don't know but it could have been rebuilt. They might have found the stones and been able to put them together but you can see some of this polygonal work is very nicely done but it's done out of a different stone and it's it doesn't seem like this stone right here. This is more smoother this one seems, you know, more weathered, but, you know, the stone itself could not, you know, might not be the same. Then you have these odd stones in this wall. Here. Here. And there's another one, I think, down further here. But, I, you know, either these are cut flat. This could be bedrock here, but I don't know if this is... Or that is, or that is, but it's cut flat with the wall. And you can see the transition from this polygonal work here with the cut stone into this. And into finally just not polygonal work at all, but, you know, more in line with the in nice, neat Inca work here. But not the same as this. So, there's obviously habitation from different time periods here you know i mean according to you know mainstream <clears throat> the incas came about in the earliest early 13th century and then lasted up until the 16th century 1570s when the spanish you know finally you know got rid of the whole thing but you know talking about a very short not not thousands of years and somehow the work went from this precision work here to, you know, either this or maybe these were both the polygonal work, the big tightly fitted polygonal, you know, there's still nice cut angles on this, sharp angles on this, but not like this. Okay, seems like an entirely different type of construction, although it might have been done. You see, this work here is awful, you know, this was obviously some sort of addition or repair, okay. Here's a piece of bedrock, I guess, in here next to this. But then you have some, like, polygonal work. Not so much. This isn't really, you know, this stuff here. Although it looks like they were trying. You know, this looks good at the bottom here, but not so much at the top. This not at all. Okay? So... But they make no mention of this in, you know, in the short time span, how they went from this to this and why, you know, why that is, you know, is always the question with these sites in Peru. And this one happens to show like all of the different sort of 
building styles, in my opinion, because you can see this elsewhere. And we're going to look at this other site, Inkawasi, real quick. Okay, and I think this is like like a PSYOP or something like that. This is one is in the Juan Cavelica, which is not far from that site at Tambomake. Okay, and they don't have much to say about this either, but you can see this is like super fine work, more, you know, right angular, and I guess what's left of it against the backdrop of this, you know, mountain, you know, rocky peak here, but <clears throat> if you really look, there's some other stuff in the adjacent places to this site that they don't show, and um, let's read about Inkawasi, because it's like Inkawasi, we're going to look at that in a second, what Inkawasi is, but this is Inkawasi Huancavelica, this is only one of them. Inkawasi Quetcha Inca Inkawasi House, Inca House, also spelled Inkawasi or Inkawasi, okay, all these different spellings, is an archaeological site in the Huancavelica region in Peru. The Inca Palace is considered one of the most important monuments of the Huancavelica region. Inkawasi is located in the Huayatara province, Huayatara. Huayatara district, about 25 kilometers from Huayatara. It is situated at a height of 3,804 meters, 12,480 feet. So it's a little up the mountain there. And, you know, of course, you're going to be building with giant blocks up in these mountains here, no problem whatsoever. Cut them all up nice like that. Okay. But the interesting thing is not far from this site is this which you see the obvious work with the trapezoidal niches in here but really super fine work and then you have this crummy work on top of it which appears to maybe be Inca or Spanish or whoever came along and used it as a foundation they're not drawing attention to this for obvious reasons I suppose Okay, but the work that's done here is absolutely, you know, precise and very right angles, very, you know, uniform type things going on here. And then I think from this point, it just starts, starts to deteriorate as time goes on. But we're talking about a period, not talking about a period of some 300 years like they're, they're saying it is or whatever. For three, four hundred years that the whole, you know, went from this to, I'm sorry, I'm not buying into it. And some other pictures, okay. All right, so, you know. Turismo, it's more travel log stuff. Now look at this. This is an entirely different one. And this is the trapezoidal openings, but not as precise as what we just saw. So this appears to be in the sort of devolution. You see the stuff on the top. That's, you know, that's Mr. Davis's shop class right there. Okay, but this stuff here, which seems to be more precise more advanced, but not quite as advanced as what we just saw, okay? All right, then you have, you know, another shot of it, all right? You can see the precision there. It's just unbelievable, amazing, whereas this is not, okay? But similar, and, they'll, you know, they'll just say, oh, it's the same thing, and it's not. Now look at this, all right? This is more like the polygonal block type. Okay, maybe geopolymer. Oh no, how dare you say that geopolymer word. But look at this. This is entirely different. All right, so I think we're talking about different time periods, different level, but, you know, they make no mention of it in any of this stuff. All right, here's another one. Different, more precision, but more with the polygonal style, but it, it's not this.